All right, so this is an Inside Jerry's Brain call on Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Uh, we are going to talk about online places for dialogue and group work and small group work and things like that. Um, I will, I will apologize ahead of time because as anybody is saying something that I know I have some relevant resources in my brain uh, to share, this being inside Jerry's brain, I will take over and do a little screen sharing as you're talking. So my apologies ahead of time. I'm trying to add something relevant to the conversation and see how that helps our group process, actually. That's a, so inside Jerry's brain is a bit of a group process experiment in that way. Um, but uh, Lawrence and I met because he, he, his platform, Sutra, was hosting a conversation that happened on Monday, which I couldn't attend because on uh, Monday my mom got a brand new shiny hip installed. <clears throat> so I was busy waiting for, for her surgery to be complete. Um, but uh, it was a conversation with Rosa Subisarreta on some really interesting things. And uh, Lawrence, if you want to take any of these paths in, I'd love to see how we can you know, we have convened people with lots of expertise in lots of different uh, uh, different areas and see how we can be helpful in unpacking this this set of issues. Okay. Uh, so are you, are you handing it over to me at this point? For a moment, yes. If you want to just, if you <laughs> okay, want to just we'll go riff. back and forth. Sounds exactly. Great. Exactly. I'll riff um, on whatever you say. Okay. So let's see where to start. I, I will give kind of the broad background on Sutra and we'll kind of evolve and see, see where it goes because I'm kind of speaking to a wide audience without a clear specific, uh, say use case in mind. I'm, I'm just going to kind of speak about everything broadly and, and hopefully we'll land in a place that is interesting to people. Um, so Sutra has been, uh, you know, percolating for the last five years or so and, and really started with, an inquiry into how to facilitate uh, meaningful connection online. Um, I, I, I've been kind of very interested in, in this area about how do you create genuine sense of human connection between people in an online context. I've been doing uh, startups and online tech stuff since 2004, so that's a domain that I've been very familiar with. And, uh, you know, people throw around words like community and, and I uh, kind of, was called to, and I caught myself, I think someone actually called me on. I was like, what exactly do you mean when you say community? And that was about 2012 or 13. And I was like, hmm, what do I mean when I say community? So uh, as I started to unpack that rabbit hole around, in, around authentic human connection, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, it, it's not what happens in a Facebook forum for the most part. I, I don't want to say never, but, you know, what I mean is that when two human beings interact, and they're left with a few sense of, you know, actually knowing the other person, kind of caring about the other person, ideally feeling supported and having a genuine kind of sense of relationship with the other person. There's obviously lots of degrees about that. Um, but as, as I've continued to explore that area, the, what really emerged was um, a theme of communication and how do you improve the quality of communication between people? How do you uh, expand the level of awareness in a given communication. So uh, specifically say, as I'm speaking here, or as any of you are listening, you know, bringing awareness to, you know, just my body sensations. I'm a little bit nervous talking to people in an online environment and possibly sharing that. Uh, if we were going to do, say, a, a, a more kind of structured theory use style process, we might uh, hold a moment of stillness and, and bring awareness to any subtle sensations or thoughts or images um, that or feelings that might be coming up for us and, and sharing that. Um, I find all of those things to be practiced skill sets uh, and uh, things to learn that you can either um, learn that specifically or you can you know have a dialogue and just learn as you go in the context of that. So uh, it's been, and, and it also to me feels that that is an ingredient, a major ingredient in um, really uh, better decision making, in, in generating better sources of knowledge, better um, insight, uh, you know, into, you know, to, to kind of take it to the extreme of potential is, is to just really uh, creating a better outcome for humanity. You know, if, if people can listen more deeply and use their awareness and more expanded ways, I believe that uh, that would improve a lot of situations. And, and so you could say that's kind of the, the, uh, the ultimate end goal here. So to, to kind of bring it back to a very grounded level, uh, as, as this exploration into community work 
and connecting people has uh, evolved and emerged, we really started to get into uh, small groups. So the small group paradigm was, was uh, really crystallized for me after uh, taking the ULAB course um, in 2014. And that was one of the first experiences where I'd, I'd interacted with a bunch of strangers online over a period of time. And I came out with a very real sense of connection to these people. And, uh, and I was like, wow, this is, this is, you know, this is real. I like, I feel connected to these people. It's more real than any other online experience I've had in that sense. Uh, and the idea that the way that people, um, form, uh, meaningful relationships is, is through small groups. And, and that if, you know, if you're going to explore something like an awareness building dialogue, um, then that works best in a small group. You know, it's, it's hard to, you know, because this quality of this, this way of dialoguing really revolves around uh, listening to each person and feeling heard by each person and each person speaking uh, and, and kind of excavating what is in each person's awareness, uh, that is difficult to do when you're in a group of 100 people or 1,000 people. Uh, it, it, you know, sort of somewhere there's a sweet spot between 5 to 10. Uh, and so we, we've been, with that in mind, we've been exploring uh, how do you work with scalable small group interaction? How do you um, optimize that? How do you deal with all the challenges around uh, engagement and you know, you bring a group of strangers together in, a, in you know, into a small group and, uh, you know, how do you kind of run that in the ideal way? Um, how do you uh, create a tool that can possibly work in different contexts where small groups might be relevant? It could be community decision making. It could be a learning experience. It could be a collaborative experience. Um, so I'm just kind of painting different contexts here that we're thinking about, um, you know, for example, uh, you know, one, I, I love the idea of co-creation. I think that's a big kind of motivating thing for me. And, uh, and as over the years, I've participated in various co-creative experiences and processes, I've observed many common challenges. Uh, many co-creative efforts uh, tend to fizzle out because there's a lack of directionality. There's a certain amount of chaos and ambiguity. And, and it's the nature of the, the process is that you're, when you're, you know, co-creating, you're delving into, uh, especially in the theory you sense, you're delving into the unknown. And when you're working with the unknown, uh, one of the biggest challenges and discomforts is that you are, well, you're working with the unknown. You don't necessarily know where you're going. And that's a really big challenge. I've been part of many, you know, many different groups where people are constantly trying to figure out where they're going or you know, how to somehow actualize their potential. Um, and so, and so uh, I think there are certain inherent um, uh, aspects of a co-creative experience that revolve around um, harvesting and, um, and, and curating what has already been spoken and, and said to, uh, to work with that. So when you, when you have an online discussion, it, you know, what was said three days ago might be gone. Uh, it's, you know, way back in the past. And so it's, how do you capture that? How do you somehow retroactively organize that? How do you make the most of uh, everything the group has uh, interacted around? Uh, so there's, there's a number of aspects there. One is just the quality of awareness and reflection in the current dialogue. And two is what's being done with what has been said. And, and three is possibly, you know, how is the group then circling back? So if you think of a co-creative process as, as a type of iteration uh, and, and you're, so you're iterating and kind of reviewing what's come up, reviewing what you've said, and then iterating into the next action step. If you don't do that, then you're kind of just perpetually stuck in the unknown and it's bound to fizzle out. Um, so all of that is kind of my very abstract and broad way of loosely introducing you to um, the kind of the themes that we're thinking about with, with the software. Um, and I will say that, you know, we started out building a community, kind of broad community platform and um, you know, we came up, uh, I think where we found a focal point that was, uh, most grounded and, and receptive was around learning experiences. You know, when, when there's a clear, um, benefit for a clear reason for a person to be participating, they want to learn something. It's much easier to kind of put them into the group construct. It's much easier to take them through a process. Um, versus just a broad uh, conversational community. 
Uh, and, and so our software works in both contexts. We have found it easier in, in the context of like a specific learning experience. I, I, I very much I welcome your feedback as, as I show you the software around kind of different applications and, and, and uses. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that part of what will come out of this call will be some interesting ideas around how that can go. Um, so at, at this point, maybe I'll, I'll pause, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Jerry, and then whenever we can ask some questions or whatever, and then the next step might be um, a type of screen share. That sounds great. Um, and uh, you're seeing the chat? I see the chat. I have not been reading it. Exactly, because it's really hard to actually speak coherent sentences like you were doing <laughs> yeah. and follow the chat. So I totally get that. But, but you'll see some questions in there and, in fact, some answers. So Judy asked, okay. community as a noun or as a verb. Michael then posted a, a, a link to a, a post from two, eight, 1985 titled Community as a Verb. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, and so you'll see a, a couple things going back and forth there. Um, and I think I'd love to do a quick swing through um, who we've got here and just just get a, a little temperature reading for how do you feel about online discussions? Have you ever experienced a fantastic one? Something like that. Um, and you know, what, what about the, what sort of attributes make for a really good online conversation? Um, and and I'll, I'll add before I just open the floor, one very tiny thing that was part of, I don't remember where it was. It might've been uh, on the well, it might've been on eyes or something like that, but really, really early on when, when we were all doing terminal sessions and it all scrolled into a buffer, <clears throat> one of these forums had a little banner that came across your screen that just said, take a minute and center yourself before entering this particular thread or discussion. And it didn't pause your keyboard. You could immediately start pounding at the keys, but just the banner acted as a little baby threshold and made conversation inside just that little bit more mindful. So, so I think sometimes the affordances are insanely subtle and sometimes even the limitations of the medium, like you know, 300 baud Hayes modem and the scrolling log and just you know, ASCII actually were pretty fruitful in that way. So uh, whoever would like to jump in, please do. Yeah, actually, I just want to say, and, and hi, hi, Lawrence. Uh, hi, Mark. One of the Theory U uh, sessions. Um, this aspect of uh, injecting some little hints or encouragements for both personal and group process awareness is, to me, that, that's a really key area these days, especially in uh, how do you get groups together online, and especially in the context where we're dealing with issues that are anthropogenic in origin, where you cannot completely objectify the question. You, you have to include intersubjectivity, essentially. And so to me, this is an absolutely crucial area. Absolutely agree. And, and I made a tiny comment in the, in the chat about this is what Facebook gets asked backwards. So Facebook's business model is all about selling us to advertisers and you know, provoking us to become addicted to sharing too much of our information, which they can then sell to advertisers. If they had actually built a platform with the intention of maybe helping civilization be civil and become civilization again, they would have built a very different platform. They would have built different things, but maybe we'd be addicted to helping each other right now in, in, in really fruitful ways. And maybe, I mean, the whole formula behind the curtain could be very different and would lead to a different set of designs. And I hope we, we explore what the designs could and ought to be. And, and, and I say that partly with no hope that Facebook is going to change that dramatically, partly also knowing that when you have to go to a different place for a special conversation, it's not as useful as when the place you're always in is really good for a special conversation. So if Facebook could make a leap like that, more people, it would affect many more people than, than a separate platform that does this, I think. This is just my hunch. So I'm trying to figure out what, what does that look like? How does that play out? Anybody else? Judy, Jean, Michael? Good experiences? Uh, you're muted, Judy. Sorry. Uh, it seems to me that we're looking at multiple levels of awareness and dimensions in this because to have the sort of mindful conversations and co-creation that is being described by Lorenz, you actually need a population of reasonably self-aware people who are self-aware for themselves and able to manage their emotions and reactions in context in a reasonable range and also um, open awareness to other people, which is another dimension of, you know, sort of elevated listening. <laughs> and 
I think that, that the, the software can enable that, I think. Um, I've had some actually very productive conversations with your group here, Jerry, which is why I keep hanging in after over a decade of knowing you, um, because of the quality of the conversations that occur and the thoughtfulness that occurs and the growth of ideas within them, they're not specifically tasked, but because of this introduction to Zoom through you and the group, I've been using it with some working groups rather effectively. And I think people are finding that it's a, a good way to do co-creation when we can't be geographically co-located. Love that. And I'm, I'm, I've always been a hesitant about video conferencing and um, I was hoping Google Hangouts with video was, you know, really powerful because they can do many, 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 they can do multiple hundred concurrent video users. They know that it's not tech technology, but they never quite got the UX right. So getting in, getting out, knowing where to go, how to join was terrible. And along comes Zoom and it's kind of eaten that space and now gone public and all that. And one of the few things I really like about Zoom is that it, we can do the occupy hand signals during a call and we can do a little bit of gesturing inside of our little cages here which is sort of fun. Like I think it, I think it, it adds a bunch of flavor and makes up for the fact that right now I'm looking at where I think the lens is on my bezel, but right now I'm looking at Michael and you can tell the difference from far away. Like we're really good at knowing where somebody else is looking and looking directly into someone's eyes is much more connective. Like it, it really, you, you sense it, you know, uh, differently. So the parallax is even a problem here. So uh, all these things are all mi mixed together. Yeah, I will say I, I'm, I'm really waiting for the day that you can have a camera embedded in the middle of the screen. <laughs> so, so one of the many startups I saw back in the day had invented a technology. So imagine your flat panel display was a series of fiber optics uh, strands with notches cut in them. And that what you were seeing was being beamed in one side and bouncing off the notches, but that the other notches the other way were absorbing light and were, mm -hmm. the whole screen was a camera. And they had only developed this as far as blurry black and white. So with software, they were trying to resolve the image and who knows what was, where it was going to go. <clears throat> so I got briefed. I invited them to our conference and they then vanished from view, which I think either means they just died because the, th the thing never worked or they got classified and like hidden from, from our view permanently. But it was, I was like, oh my God, that's so genius because the parallax issue completely melts away. My right. whole screen becomes, and I could maybe even say, you know, make the focal point be where the person I'm talking to's eyes are so that you can, so that there's nuance in it. But they went away. We, we used to have some really good uh, learning discussions on LinkedIn before they screwed up the environment six or seven years ago. Um, <clears throat> discussion threads that ran on actually for thousands of posts because it worked in such a way that, that once you were following a thread, the next post ended up in your mailbox. And you could answer it right from your mailbox as opposed to have to go someplace mm -hmm. to respond to it. The difficulty was that after a period of time, with people coming in and leaving, you got to a point where you ended up covering the same things that you had already talked about a dozen times before and people got tired of repeating, and so they just tuned out, which is what the, the harvest capability of Sutra was something that I really liked. Hmm. So to be able to, to go ahead and th those things that go by that, that the group collectively comes to essentially close your on, you can harvest and say, here's where we are. And when a new person shows up, you can say, here's where we are. We already talked about these things and came to an agreement. If you have a question about them, you can raise it, but we're not gonna go through the whole discussion again about all these things, okay, so. Which, which takes me to another little comment I put on the chat here, which I, I just wrote the word amnesia, just as a reminder to me, um, without explaining it in the chat, but one of the things I've learned, and I haven't shared my brain here, here in the call yet, but one of the things I've learned from 21 years of using the brain is that every <coughs> tool we have is a flow tool. We have very few tools for curating a stock of information. There's wikis, and to me there's the brain because all the other tools 
you're always creating a new mind map. They don't let you make one big mind map. And I have, I have one mind map I've been tending for 21 years, which has everything I care about remembering for those 21 years. All of you who are on this call are in the brain and your context is in the brain. Likely where we met or if we attended an event together, things you care about, companies you've started, essays you've written, posts, your, you know, your, your Twitter account, they're probably all in there. I, I, I can do that and show you. But it would be lovely for me from, and, and this, to me this knowledge is rare. I don't think a lot of people have had the experience I've gotten to have because of this brain thing. So I wish I could come into a conversation and have a standing snapshot of that conversation that says, here's a sort of a heat map of where we are, here are the topics we've covered. So if you wanted to go catch up on this particular argument that fascinates you, go here and we've curated or pulled out the threads that matter, et cetera, et cetera. But, but I, I wrote in the chat just now that I'm always daunted when I enter an online discussion that has long threads because I'm not gonna remember where it was. By the time I remember to reply to something, it's long past, I get, the, the, mere, the length of a good sustained conversation online has always been an obstacle to me. Um, and so, so I, I tend to bail on places where I feel like I can't quite catch up in order to participate appropriately. I don't know if other people feel differently that way. Yeah. I think that's one of the key challenges is how to go from flows to stocks. Uh, because as, as Jerry just said, we've got tons of flow oriented tools and, and even other kind of processes like, uh, you know, World Cafe, uh, there's a harvesting phase, which is usually the least satisfactory phase uh, of the whole process because no one feels it really happened well. The challenge is, well, how do you help automate that if it's even possible? And I'd be curious, curious uh, Lawrence, as to what uh, facilities in Sutra and how you work with that. Yeah, I will, I will demonstrate that when, um, when we do the screen share. Awesome. Uh, Judith had mentioned the word Delphi, iterative process. I'm just wondering what is that exactly? Uh, that's a typo. It's Delphi. It's kind of where you create concept statements or other things and you circulate and people iteratively add to it. It's ancient technology, but something that would be useful for some of the things we've been discussing. And I'm wondering how to mo modernize it in light of these things that are occurring. I've got it on the screen right now. So um, it dates, dates back to Rand Corporation. In fact, I, I remember the first 300 baud modem I was using was to try and connect to a Delphi network in the East Coast. So it was long distance as well as 300 baud. Um, it's an old system. Uh, incidentally, in terms of old systems, um, let me intrude just this briefly. Can we clear the screen share here, video? Gotcha. All yours. Um, can you see my? Yes, thank you. You've got two screens got going. And... I'll put it this way. Oh, Oops. Better that way. <laughs> um, can you see my camera? Which is? It's, um, it's <laughs> how many things? Try touching it. Oh, Here's there it camera is. camera suspended on a, a ruler by a piece of string. <laughs> oh, hilarious. So you have mounted your camera mid-screen on purpose. Yes, yes, and I can move it from side to side. Yeah. If I have to choose somebody else that I'm talking to, I sort of go somewhere else, but it's a bit, yeah, go back, Frank, back over there. It's <laughs> but it sort of gives me that, that ability to relax and stay present in the space. Mm. Um, I like that. That's sweet, and you're compensating for the parallax problem right there. Yeah, no, I tried also the periscope, you know, um, uh, drop down reflector, that was nice, but the field of view was difficult. I tried double reflecting glass, which was a lot like that technology. Right. But couldn't get that to work. So <laughs> I ended up with a piece of string and a ruler. And a so I think, it's, I think it's Errol Morris who does interview documentaries. And he invented um, that this thing he called the monster interviewer or something like that. I've got it in my brain, I can look it up. But it was basically like a teleprompter that newscasters use with a one-way mm -hmm. mirror so that as he was interviewing somebody, they were looking directly into the middle of him. Yeah. And it looked like a face-to-face -face conversation, but then he could capture a, you know, a high def, a beautiful video interview. Yeah. Just tools, technologies, and they come with string. Always exactly. there's string. With tin cans, otherwise the string doesn't work. That's it, very important. So, so Lawrence, do you, wanna, do you wanna take us into a, a bit of a screen share and just think through, talk, talk out loud mm -hmm. about your, your design process? 
Um, yes. So let's uh, let's see where we're at here. All right. Here. And uh, apropos the Delphi technique, I think uh, when the Institute for the Future was founded, they were founded on Delphi and did that for maybe 10 years and then lost, you know, totally switched their process and dropped it. But they were a Delphi shop early on. Is there now a co-creation, are there multiple co-creation alternatives to that that are more simultaneous? Because one of the drawbacks at the time was it was iterative, you know, and, and kind of bimodal in that sense. You got A, then you got A prime, then you got B plus A prime, et cetera. And I, I think that's what we're talking about today, but I have no knowledge of what the facilitation systems are that are useful now. And I, that is too deep a question for my knowledge of the space but I'd love to know too. Go ahead, Lawrence. So yeah, I'll give a kind of a brief top level overview and then I'll highlight a couple of uh, different use cases and, uh, and then we can use that as a, as a starting ground for the conversation. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, one of the observations that came out to me about, you know, online experiences where people feel connected is the importance of the small group construct. I mean, I'd say this is an example of it, right? We're on a call, there's six of us, um, you know, there's a lot more space there for each person to speak and, and to have, you know, a very human-like experience. Um, and that's, that's always been uh, a very important factor in, um, in this work. A lot of, a lot of Sutra has been um, highly emergent in the sense of where it is today is definitely not necessarily what I was thinking about four or five years ago, but um, kind of by leaning into this thread of uh, connection, communication, community, and, and always endeavoring to kind of get more practical and really observing um, real world interaction. So, you know, we, I wrote the first line of code in 2015 and we deployed in a co-working space um, and, you know, three, four months later in mid in summer of 2015 and, you know, crickets, nobody was using it. Uh, but through a process of iteration in, in, at this point, many different communities and courses and, uh, and whatnot, you know, each one very much a learning experience we've we've kind of evolved the product. And so this is, this is what, what you're seeing now. So one of the, um, one of the key features of Sutra is, is this concept of a circle. Everything in Sutra uh, revolves around a circle and um, circles can contain circles. It's almost like a multicellular organism. You know, once you understand one cell, you can create uh, all sorts of things with it. And that's, that's kind of the design inspiration for Sutra. And in some sense, uh, it makes things a little more abstract and possibly confusing because uh, there's many ways to do something. But once you understand what a circle is and the way that you can kind of um, stack them and, and work with them, it, it gives you uh, tremendous flexibility around uh, navigating group experiences. And, and also, uh, I think one of the things that's always emerging for me is this, is the relationship between, uh, you know, real human interaction and chaos. You know, real human interaction, I think, is, is naturally chaotic, uh, but there's an inherent creativity there. And if you try to overstructure it, you lose that creativity. And so, um, I think a big part of it is is really working with that inherent chaos with this kind of almost like a spiral mindset about like the one thing that I think works really well with chaos is iteration and just kind of coming back to the same point and, you know, rechecking and rechecking. And so, um, so just kind of top level, you know, Jerry, you told me to give you some thinking around our design process. Um, this is a, a lot of what, what we try to design is, um, is a, a, a tool that uh, isn't locked into any particular use case. And that's almost been to a detriment because, you know, I think if we'd set out to create like a system that was specifically for creating learning experiences, um, it might have made things simpler. Uh, I think what, what my intuitive observation here is that when a community is interacting, it is a learning experience. And when you're, when you're generating and co-creating, you are learning. And so there's a, there's, and, and when you're working with the unknown, you you are learning. So the the learning process, both from the side of the, the human side, the skill sets that a person needs to learn, as Judy said earlier about kind of like, you know, the level from which a person is operating, uh, that is a learning process. And then whatever the collaborative um, purpose or goal might be, uh, if you're kind of working in this unknown kind of way, that is a learning process. So there's an inherent 
learning process, or if you're a community that is, uh, let's say, uh, trying to do anything together that's novel or new, that in itself is also a learning process. The figuring out for people, people figuring out how to be together and collaborate uh, harmoniously is a learning process. Um, so, so that kind of idea that uh, we have a learning platform <clears throat> that isn't locked into what you might <clears throat> traditionally think of as a learning platform, um, but is very flexible uh, and looks like a kind of collaborative platform or, or a conversational platform is, is, is one of the, you know, I think when you <clears throat> tune into the subtleties of what we're trying to do here, uh, that's, that's one of the underlying threads. So uh, with that kind of top level introduction, I'll explain a little bit about what's going on here in the screen. Um, <clears throat> so this is a women's meditation course. Uh, and the top level here is a circle that contains uh, four sub circles. And you have 27 members that have been broken up into four sub circles. Uh, and if I go inside one of these, um, what you'll find is what looks very much like a basic discussion thread, something you might see on something like Slack. Um, and that's kind of the, uh, the lowest common feature here is basic uh, chat-like interaction. You come here, if you want to post the message, you click on the blue button, you write something, hello world, and you post it, and there it goes, asynchronous chat. Uh, nothing particularly novel there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the basics first, and and then we'll get into some of the more um, unique features of of Sutra. Uh, so the second thing that it's a, a basic in most uh, learning experiences is that you want to have uh, content uh, to to share. And so here in the resources, uh, you have modular content that can include video, text, uh, you know anything that you would normally want to. Uh, put into a learning experience that can be published as modules with subsections. Um, another point of note here is that this uh, can be set to be uh, locked down so that only the creator can modify it, or it can be a collaborative resource. So, you know, one of the threads that we really think about in terms of co-creative experiences and co-creative learning is co-constructed knowledge. You know, you have a learning experience and almost every learning platform is a one-way communication and the content that's the, you know, the, the learning, the textbook content, it's, it's fixed, it's a one-way communication. And, and so um, how do you enable that content to, um, to be co-constructed? I'm gonna show you some very specific features around that um, that kind of give Sutra almost a, a wiki-like um, aspect to it. So um, quick check in here, is, is everything so clear so far? Good over here. Great. All right. Any questions, anybody? You're doing a great job. Go ahead. All right, cool. So um, so we have a conversation. We have the content. I'm going to start getting into some of the um, kind of differentiating features now. One of the aspects is if you take the classroom metaphor uh, where you have, um, you know, you're in a physical classroom, you have the textbook, and you have the guided conversation. Um, and one of our uh, reflections is that uh, when you bring a group of people together, if they have some sort of structure or guidance, that it, it can help a lot to guide that conversation into deeper places. So if you, if you look here and you see the, the posts of the green bars that I'm passing, these are part of um, a script, a sequence script. This is an eight week course where Part of the content is in the modules and part of it has been scripted in, in a feature that we call structures. So this is a structure here where you see this post went out on Monday, February 19th. This one went out on Tuesday, February 20th. Uh, and it's a way to create a scaffolding for um, an inquiry or a learning experience. So you could imagine like say, like say if, if I put this in a completely different context, let's say you wanted to approach some sort of community governance question and a traditional approach might be, well, let's take all thousand people in our community and put them in a discussion forum and do it that way. But in Sutra, what you could do is you could take those thousand people, you could break them into a hundred groups of 10 people, and then you could drop a structure with a set of questions uh, into each of those 10 people and, and have groups of 10 people basically go through um, a dynamic, interactive, conversational experience um, and, and then kind of 
call what's coming out of that? And, and so how would you call what's coming out of that? Well, that's, that's what I'm about to show you next, which is that when you have a very long discussion like this, people share very long posts and sometimes in those very long posts, there are nuggets of really valuable wisdom that often get completely uh, lost or forgotten. So um, our uh, kind of exploration into that, and this is very much like us trying to figure out how to address this, is that you can note something. And when you note something, uh, you can do two things. First is that you can uh, just call what you want. And second is that you can retroactively and collaboratively um, label it. So here I've created a label called meditation, assuming that this person is describing something really interesting about meditation. I'm saving this note. Um, that tag has been created. Now, you'll notice that, of course, this original text did not get modif modified. But what did get modified is if I go to the notes here, This piece of text is, this was noted in the past. So here it is. And that's the snippet that, that I noted, meditation. So um, I'm going to go back to, to the discussion and just note a couple more things here so that I can show you uh, where this ability is going. So let's find um, a few more comments here. Let's assume that this too is a very um, interesting reflection on meditation. Uh, I'm going to save that. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, harvest, we'll harvest one more comment here. And the idea here is that, you know, you can go into a discussion and you as the kind of person running it or, or, you know, ideally everybody as people participating in this process can collaboratively and retroactively, that's the key feature here, you know, as you're in a discussion, you know, you're not going to be thinking about labeling your comments and, and, and I don't think that's a reasonable expectation. But retroactively, as you're reading something, and particularly if you're reading someone else's content, and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. Like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm into this. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and, and save that. I, I find myself wanting to do, do that all the time, wanting to somehow categorize other people's contributions. So, um, so that's really the, the, the gist of the effort here. So I'm, I've, I've now labeled uh, three comments. Uh, when I click on the label, I can just zoom in on that part of the conversation with those uh, comments. If I go to notes, I get a slightly different view on that um, in, the, in that I can see uh, the edited notes. And, and here is also, again, some of this is, is we're really figuring this out. But the aim is, the goal is that you have a group of people and, and here's something, there's a, a seed of insight. And together we can go and, and you know, re, rework we work this to make it uh, more powerful or relevant uh, or you know insightful. Something that as a as a community, there's both the aspect of the individual contribution, and then there's the collaborative um, refinement of of that contribution. So um, so we've got the notes, and now what? And 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 the next step is that we can now um, we can now take these notes and um, very easily capture them into a resource. So I can take that, I can create a new topic, we'll call the topic meditation, we'll say, uh, you know, personal insights, here is the content that everyone contributed. Um, everyone is who contributed is mentioned here, here's the discussion it came from. When I save this page, everyone gets notified. Um, and then I, I go to resources. And here's that that resource that I just created. So it's, it's right here. Everyone is attributed. Um, so in, in, in a way, it, it, the goal here is to create a bridge between uh, a kind of an unstructured, uh, chaotic conversation and, and then a, a, a flow trajectory for gradually um, organizing that, harvesting it, culling it and into notes and then, and then possibly are refining that into finished resource content that can be shared with, you know, either uh, a post course uh, highlight or with a community, uh, you know, with the broader community or with other communities, um, you know, or or in the example of I gave you with the community decision making, you've taken hundred people and broken them. Up, I'm sorry, a thousand people, broken them up into a hundred. Uh, groups of 10 people, it would be impossible for any one human being to keep on top of all of those. 
but you could ostensibly um, have people in each of those conversations creating notes and then um, kind of at a top level see those notes and harvest them into reflections and resources and that's um, so that's part of the in intention here. So I've, I've gone through a lot. Maybe it's a good time to do a quick check-in. Uh, any yeah. questions or reflections so far? Uh, yeah, Lawrence, when, when you do that harvesting and you create the resource, <clears throat> next week people add four more things that they think are relevant to meditation. How do you update the resource? Well, let's do it right now. So we'll go and say, uh, you know, this – uh, this one right here, someone's added another reflection. We'll label it meditation. We'll save the note. We'll go to resources. I'm sorry, no, we'll go to notes. Not resources. And so here's that comment. I'm going to check it off. I'm going to add it to resources. I'm going to go to the meditation resource. I'm going to select the personal insights page. And here it is. It's at the bottom here. So I'm just going to uh, I, you know, there's a number of ways I can do this, but I'm just going to put it up here and, uh, yeah, she's already mentioned there. So I'm just going to delete that. And okay. So, it, so it ends up loading it on the, on the bottom of the page. So you don't impact all of the additional notes. That exactly. you added to it, it, it just kind of puts it in there so you can then edit it the way you want it to. You've, uh, you've done some nice work on this since I used it last. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, it's so are, are the notes you're adding, are those visible only to you or to everybody? They're visible to everybody. So this is a, a collaborative uh, kind of situation and, and you can filter it to, you know, just notes from you. You can filter it by note count or um, most recent. Um, and here also um, the idea is if you have a whole bunch of people in the group, so this is a note that I didn't note. Um, if I, if I, uh, see, I can see that someone else noted this and I can, in a, in a sense, kind of vote for it or whatever. So here I've, all it is, is I'm basically noting it myself. So, so <clears throat> there's a way to also kind of have a type of popularity view on this. So here is uh, a note that two people have noted. And if I scroll here and do by note count, um, that should pop to the top. <clears throat> can you add labels to other people's notes? And more than one yeah. label. So here I'm, I'm going to add a label. We'll call this, um, we'll call this reflection. Yeah. And we'll give it a different color. Create label, save note, and there you go. Other comments, questions? And um, I, Lawrence, I just typed into the chat that like we're in a, we're in a, a sandbox clone of a conversation, right? We're not screwing up somebody's active. No, this is a sandbox clone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, this but, is. It, but what's funny is, as you started just messing with it in demo mode to like add stuff, I had a, a little constricting feeling in my, in my chest. I knew that you were doing this in a workspace, you know, just separate, but I wasn't really positive and it's like, ah, and which is good. Like, like, you know, you might want to use that when you're discussing this with people and say, and maybe I said in the, in the comment, maybe explain this before you go in, but you might actually delay the explanation and say, Hey, what I just did, did it cause anybody any agita? This is just a play space, but, mm. but that emotion you felt is important to the thing you're trying to achieve here. Right, right, in, in yeah. That general area, um, the, uh, the only thing that bothered me at all, and this is lovely stuff, uh, Morris, very nice indeed, was all this breaking people up. Ah, every time you broke people up, I, I tweaked a little bit. Mm. Into some I mean, as a word, maybe maybe organizing people into small groups instead of breaking them into small groups. Something like that. Find the word, please. That's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, word choice is important. Uh, it, breaking is not quite the connotation we're trying you could, to. You could just say convening small groups, or you know, uh, something like that, which is a po you know positive word into the small group format, mm -hmm. and then back to plenary or whatever you, you want to do. But yeah, I totally agree that breaking or uh, fragmenting or you know, any of those kinds of words probably don't help you. Mm -hmm. Neo-tribalizing. Foster would be a good rule. <laughs> yeah. What, what, One of, sorry, what did you say, Judah? Foster. Foster. Fostering small group discussion, yeah. One of, one of my problems in the demo is that I would not know to create the labels and the notes and the resources that you just did, that, that these are not obvious gestures. Yeah. Uh, and you've invented this from, whole, from sort of from whole cloth. I mean, this is a new kind of conception of it. And I'm curious because 
there are several other formats for doing similar things to this. Uh, one of which is, you know, uh, comments on Google Docs where you can leave a, a note or a comment or whatever. And those are pretty well known by now. So, so that actually sort of works. Another one is the shadow internet things like Hypothesis, where you have a plugin that then creates, you know, you can overlay any page, any page on the web that will allow it and basically mark up the page and have a, and have a running commentary in the margin. And Hypothesis is totally open source. Um, so that would, might be an interesting code base to start from. But you're doing something different here. You, you have, you have uh, an instance of conversations in here with your own set of tools and affordances. And, and I guess back to what I started with, I don't know that I could easily intuitively uh, have done what you just did. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing that we're trying to, we, I, I, I would say that unintentionally, a, a type of uh, workflow for working with community discussion and knowledge has emerged here. Uh, with with Sutra, and um, you know, as as this as has a, emerged as a type of workflow, my reflection has been like, hmm, wow, this seems like it has some like really interesting potential. Uh, but of course, it's a workflow that absolutely no one is familiar with, uh, and that you know we are exploring how to introduce, how to make intuitive for people. Um, and so that that's kind of a you know whether or not this is an optimal workflow or how to really um, uh, optimally introduce it to people as something that we're, we're very much trying to figure out. So, and it strikes me that partly what you've built, and I'm oversimplifying here in what I just typed, but that you have a series of primitives. A circle is a primitive, a tag or a label is a primitive, and I, I think you've got both, and they're both sort of roughly the same thing, but just with different names. We don't and, have tags anymore, we, we got rid of those. Oh, you got rid of those, okay, so then there's only labels. Um, and then you have templates, which you haven't demoed yet, but you can, but you can attach templates in interesting ways to different objects, to other primitives. Uh, so you can have a, a response to a query be a template, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with pick lists. But, but it seems like maybe one way to explain this is, hey, there's only X, and I'm just, I just enumerated three here, there may be six, I don't know, but there's this many primitives and we're remixing them in creative ways. That's, that's like the, what the Tinker Toy set looks like. Then go into the, the, the constructs of the discussion. Right, right. Um, yeah, and I'll just briefly demo what I think you're talking about there with the templates. Uh, which is uh, so the the you know in in the context of a discussion, um, one of our aspirations is to um, deepen the quality of, of of awareness in a communication that happens between a group of people, and and what that means is is you know really expanding the scope of what a person is considering uh, while in, they're in an interaction. That might be bringing awareness to body sensations, to images coming up for me, thoughts, feelings, you know, situational, environmental uh, things, um, you know, bringing awareness to how something is, is maybe uh, what something that someone shared is bringing up for me. Uh, I, I personally consider this to be one of the most um, important uh, and uh, most important to develop human skills in in the world uh, as as far as just uh, harmonious society. So uh, a big part of our exploration is you know how do you kind of introduce this quality of awareness in, in communication to people? How do you and more than just introducing it, how do you make it very easy and accessible in the context of an online communication tool, and particularly in the context of a type of co-creative collaborative tool? Uh, that communities might use because, you know, one of my personal theories is that, you know, if you want to have co-creative community in the utopian sense, then the, a key ingredient is communication and, and, and listening and holding space. That w without that, it doesn't matter how good your system or aspiration is. If those basic attributes are not in place or there isn't a willingness to learn them, uh, the community effort or collaborative effort will be challenged. So, um, so thinking about how to weave that into um, a learning or co-creative process is a big part of what we try to do. And one of our attempts at that uh, in, in a very kind of crude and prototype form right now is this feature called Reflect, which allows me to um, structure the, um, the way a person responds to an input. So here, uh, what thoughts and feelings come up for you? What associations come up for you? What images and sensations come up for you? This is all customizable. So you can you can create a type of micro survey as the organizer uh, to have this be whatever you want or to have it just be a basic input box for general 
uh, responses. Uh, it's very much an area of exploration here. So if I type uh, thoughts and feelings, you know, happy, tree, uh, flying, and I post that, um, that comes here. It's, it's in line in the conversation. Uh, this is also something that, that can be noted. Uh, I can label it as, you know, uh, why not just use the one here, reflection, mm -hmm. uh, save. And um, so again, really looking at how you can have a conversation and then kind of uh, have this second order of data, right? So there's what's being said and spoken, and then there's the kind of uh, subconscious response to it. Uh, and how do you capture that and bring that in parallel to the discussion and somehow work with that? Um, I think we're very much at the early stages of, of this, of, of making it both a rich experience so that maybe as I'm, um, as I'm uh, responding here, uh, I, it can be tied into like an image search engine where images and, and things come up as suggestions. Um, and then after you capture that, really maximizing the value of that. So you have 10 people that have done this and they've had a, a deep kind of uh, you know, reflective conversation and all that data is there. What can you do with it? How can you somehow uh, take that into a more generative uh, potential where you know, somehow in bringing that together and making it visible and highlighting it for people, it might be seed for um, new awareness or, or insight. So that's where, where we're trying to go with, with almost all of this. You know, this, this labeling feature, I kind of label it as a, categorize it as a kind of a nonlinear conversational um, feature. So you can, you, can kinda, you can take things that have been said in the past and bring them into the future and retroactively organize them. And then the reflections are similar in, in you can kind of take the conversation that's happening on one level and then, and then bring awareness to different levels of that conversation and somehow capture that. And, uh, and all of it, um, I think if I had to describe a broad, uh, a broad trajectory here is this idea that you, you have a, a, a variety of approaches to deepening the conversation. And then the intent is really to kind of harvest and cull that and, and bring it full circle into uh, a, a resource. So you, you kind of have an implicit co-creative process happening here where the, the kind of lowest uh, hanging fruit is, say, a finished piece of uh, resource content um, uh, that, uh, that might come out of your discussion and might be uh, the seed for, uh, say, for example, I want to label this and say, okay, this is a great thing to consider for, um, you know, next steps. Always a big thing with any sort of co-creative discussion. So I've created that label, save note. And so now collaboratively, we can go in, we can zoom in on uh, the next steps, we can add some reflections on that. And then uh, if we wanted to, we could create a new circle and, and, and shift mm -hmm. that conversation there. Um, but again, kind of working with the chaos instead of trying to structure it out, you know, really uh, trying to kind of extract the optimal creative potential in um, in what I, I find is naturally in, in these kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, questions, anybody? Go ahead, Judy. Well, the question I had was one about the, the process of formation of a group and the progress of the group along the trajectory in terms of self-awareness and disclosure and trust and all of those things that become part of co-creation. How do you manage that, or do you manage that, or do you trust the group to manage it? Um, it it's sort of self-enabling, I guess, would be the best way I can summarize what you're saying, because it'll go where the group goes. Um, I don't know if that's a sensible question, but... <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question. Um, so part of these kinds of things is process, and part of it is, is technology. Um, on, on the, and part of it is content. Um, and, and so on, on the process side, you know, our goal is to create um, features that really support this quality of interaction. Um, there are elements of creating a safe space that are um, you know, heavily dependent on the person organizing it, heavily dependent on particular uh, messages and content that's shared early in the creation of that space, the trust building, right? It's not like software uh, isn't going to create that sense of human trust. Um, right. But we as, uh, you know, as an, as, a, as an effort can 
uh, create resources for people to do that, whether it's um, best practices for forming a group, whether it's um, kind of suggestions around how to structure a group and things like that. And that's something that, um, you know, with the experiences running on Sutra right now, we tend to be have a, uh, Sutra is open for anyone to go ahead and, and play with and create experiences. Um, we, we, we tend to be heavily involved with some of those experiences where we kind of very actively work with people creating them to, um, to kind of weigh in on, on exactly the things you're talking about. Like, how do you create that trust? How do you create that uh, sense of uh, safe space? Um, it's, it's very, you know, I, I, I will say that, that the small group process is a, a very tricky territory uh, for a number of reasons, going from trust to engagement, uh, and, you know, to figuring out how to scale that to the, 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 the additional labor that might be involved. Um, a lot of those, those are questions that we are, are very much trying to understand how to create some sort of uh, optimization around how to you know, make that uh, simpler. And, and I think our goal is to really create a type of toolkit that will, hmm. um, you know, radically improve that uh, and, and really help people create. Again, I think one of my biggest observations from the co-creative world is that People like to use these terms without necessarily understanding uh, the, 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 the human skill sets that need to be learned, you know, that it's not just a process thing. It's very much a, uh, a skill set thing. And, and so um, kind of helping people create those experiences, helping people learn how to do it, helping people, participants, uh, learn whatever they need uh, in line with the process. I think that's really the, the most uh, kind of key thing that we're trying to go through, like uh, crystallize here, is that um, you, you know when you think about things like meditation or mindfulness, uh, and you think about uh, doing that on, say, you're meditating, and and but the goal of it is to bring that into your interaction, into the context of what you're doing, and and so uh, you know how do you bring awareness into the context, this kind of awareness-based interaction, effortlessly into the context of whatever kind of collaborative of learn or learning process you might be doing. Um, and that's, that's where we're really trying to go here is, is to create a general tool that can, uh, given a, a very broad set of different contexts, can uh, make it easier for people to interact this way. But it's a very unknown territory. So, you know, we're always trying to figure out what we're doing. <laughs> really exciting. Anybody else? Um, can you release the screen for a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. I just want to show a couple things. Um, are you familiar with uh, game shifting? I'm not. So um, oops, Arthur Brock and a bunch of other people did this emerging leader labs. And as part of that, they kind of invented a process called game shifting, uh, which is interesting because Arthur ran a meeting for me once uh, using game shifting, which is more of a real time thing. but but a couple other people who've experienced game shifting and I have a common thought, which is it would be great to have kind of a, a scaffolding app that you could plug different kinds of group process into, right? So one of the things I'm sitting here wondering, because we, we mentioned World Cafe along the path, is could you more deeply emulate the World Cafe process using Sutra? And one of the things that happens in World Cafe is people shift from table to table, and when they shift from table, there's one person who stays behind as their rapporteur, and they explain what, was, what the discussion was so far from the notes that have been hand scribbled on you know, the round coffee table. Um, what's the equivalent of the round coffee table in Sutra? And you could probably build it as a resource artifact, but you might rename it. I mean, could you flavor Sutra to be a World Cafe platform and instantiate it and say, okay, now we've agreed to do the next three hours as World Cafe virtually, Let's go do it here. And then the, ne the next day we're going to do is open space. So in open space, what we need is, I think we should talk about this. And then we have a schedule of rooms and times. And we have a way to flip between the rooms. There would be different affordances for that, right? So, so here I have group process tools and techniques in my brain. Uh, I've been collecting a bunch here. And uh, conversa there's a sort of conversation tools. Ba -ba -ba, you fill up, blah, blah. Group Dynamics has a lot more. Oh, there we go. Power Tools for Collaboration. Sorry, let me go back. Um, so World Cafe and a bunch of other things are, 
are kind of hiding here, but, uh, and also the um, liberating structures people know a lot about mm. all of this, obviously. Um, but here's a bunch of power tools for collaboration, each of which sort of does a thing, a narrow thing. So kind of I'm saying, can you, following maybe the Tinker Toys approach, can you take the, the raw materials you've created and reshape them and instantiate them as different kinds of group process that people can invoke? Mm -hmm. And now to take us back to game shifting, um, what Arthur and people who did game shifting do is they will track a, con a, a meeting in real time and use different parts of a, just a whiteboard. So it doesn't have to be software, obviously, but um, to say, okay, we've agreed that this next next segment is going to be speaker and audience, and then we're going to shift into popcorn, and then we're going to shift into Q&A, and then we're going to have a baton pass kind of format. And uh, each of those is a way of fostering some kind of group discussion with some sort of purpose. Uh, and then he's tracking a bunch of other things. But if we start to break our agreement that this is audience with no questions until the end of the speech, and then there's questions, he, will, he, he would subtly sort of move the little pointer from audience to uh, popcorn without necessarily interrupting the conversation, just so that the group was aware that they had just kind of broken their agreement and entered a different kind of conversation. So there's lots of ways this all interacts. It gets messy and confusing pretty quickly. But I'm just wondering, um, is, this, is this avenue something that's interesting to you? How might that work? Because I'm, I'm in a conversation that is not a project yet, but is like this wishful thinking wouldn't it be great to have a game shifting framework into which you plugged things like Sutra, but also things like Sutra that understood group process techniques quite deeply and could lead newbies through a particular group process? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I love that idea. Um, if I can, if I can share my screen with you again, I can, I can show it. you uh, how you know one one approach to something like that in uh, in Sutra. So. Um, I will just, so as I mentioned earlier, circles can contain circles. In this particular circle, I have uh, turned off sub-circles. So I'm just gonna briefly uh, go into circle settings here and go into the sidebar sections and show the sidebar section circles. Great, so here we are. And if I go here, we can see that there's uh, no circles. So uh, ostensibly, I could have, uh, let's say that, you know what, I'm gonna go back to the top level here. Um, where we can see these conversations at the top. Yeah, so here are all these discussions and let's say we're doing some sort of world cafe type format. Um, what you, so just to very roughly kind of outline what you said, Jerry, as, as how it would work in Sutra. Um, when you go to the membership section here, you have an ability to uh, automatically place members. So basically after each conversational round, you could go here and say, you know, take all the active members uh, and split them equally into one or more into circles with no more than five people. Um, do it randomly and, or ask them for their preferences. And ba basically, or you could do it by, you know, run a survey or whatever. But you could basically um, regroup people automatically. So they've got their old discussions. They've had them. Those are preserved. Uh, and then each time there's a new iteration of, of discussions, so you would regroup them here, you'd place them, and then you would add uh, possibly a structure into those discussions. So then you would take uh, a structure, let's just go ahead and create one here. So this is, a, a, you know, we'll call this, um, you know, World Cafe Inquiry. And we'll add the first question, which is, you know, what current issue do you think is most important? And we'll add another one that says, um, how might others view this issue? And, and so let's say the goal here is to do an asynchronous <clears throat> uh, type of round robin discussion over time where the conversation in each group only progresses when 75% uh, of people respond to each post. Hmm. And uh, each question is, uh, we'll say it's three posts. Uh, so how might others view this issue and uh, who are the stakeholders? And when we add one more that just says um, what, you know, what are possible next steps? So here we're going to make, we're making all of these dynamic. And yeah, so there we go. So we've created the World Cafe Inquiry with four questions. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and save that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go back to let's 
go back to the circles here and I'll just demonstrate this in real time. So we're gonna create a circle here. Uh, we'll call this um, one of the table discussions. And uh, we don't need to announce this to anybody. So create that. Um, and we'll go back to that structure that I was just at. We're gonna go ahead and add that to well, one of the table discussions and we'll fire it off as the system. We'll send it now and here we are. I'm in here. I'm the only person in here. So uh, what current issue do you think is most important? Uh, learning how to listen and hold space. And so I've created that post. I'm the only person here. So the next question has come through. How might others view this issue? You get the idea. So basically we could do a round of these. Uh, we could reshuffle people, do another round. Uh, people could be instructed to note things as, uh, you know, holding space ideas, uh, create that label, save that note. So here we've created that note and that label. And if we go into the top level discussion here and we go to notes, we should see it right there. Mm -hmm. So you have just had say 50 conversations uh, that are basically people being reshuffled uh, five times, um, you know, basically like cohorts of 10 conversations at a time, reshuffled five times, you had 50 conversations around a singular thread of inquiry with a, with a set of questions. People are labeling and, and noting things in those questions and then you get a top level view of the highlights, whatever you know, kind of came out, you can then call into a resource and potentially share that uh, with, with the broader public. Um, you know, I think, I think I th I th what I like about what you said, Jerry, is, is that uh, you know, kind of thinking about different group processes or different methods of inquiry that could be uh, kind of woven into the, the capabilities here so that someone could uh, you know, relatively quickly just bang that together with, with, their, particular, um, with their particular community or, or body of people. Yep, thank you. That was, that was uh, super interesting. Anybody else? Thoughts, comments, questions? Wishes? I'll take all the wishes. Yeah, wishes are yeah. good. I've I've been a fan since the first time I saw it. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> I want it. And, and even even though I gave Lorenz a hard time. I believe you produced a pretty good video. Dean's good at that. Um, yeah, I think uh, so. I'll, I'll you know I'll weigh in with my with my question, which is that. Um, you know, we're, we're really trying to uh, figure out how to talk about this, um, how to approach communities that might use it. Um, you know, our, our aspiration is to, uh, is to turn this into an open source project. Um, so there's, there's a lot of areas where we're trying to um, kind of lean into uh, and, you know, particularly around, obviously I've had an hour and a half to kind of explain it to you and, and show you to you, you know, how to make that uh, more clear or, or how to talk to people uh, about it in a way that they're like, wow, this sounds really interesting. I, I get a, you know, there are a lot of communities out there that I, you know, there's no shortage of discussion products from discourse to, to mighty to slack. Um, I do feel that there is a kind of a unique approach to discussion here that would be valuable and interesting to particular kinds of communities. And so one of the things I'm trying to really figure out is, um, you know, how to, how to approach that. Like which, yeah, which are the communities and how do you talk to them exactly? Yeah. Any thoughts, anybody? From my perspective, it's just difficult to get people to move. I mean, once they get com comfortable with an environment, getting them to move is, it's, it's funny, uh, online, yeah. online conversations seem to be a one-shot deal. Like, whatever they're born into uh, is often what they die in. Uh, however stupidly configured it is for the thing they're trying to get done. So, you know, if they were born in a LinkedIn discussion group, then getting them over into 
uh, you know, something else, you're going to lose 60% of the participants easily. Even, even on the environment that they're in has become absolutely terrible. Right. Um, I, I used to own a 1962 Sunbeam Alpine. So I was, on an, I was on an Alpine's mailing list, which had like old geezers who were busy sharing these insane stories about how you fix that or do that. And, and it had gone quiet for a while and just somebody did a test of the list and then which cascaded the, I guess now in retrospect, obvious 30 messages of get me off this list copied to everybody. <laughs> And it, it was like, oh my God, amateur hour. But, but it was a really old, crusty tool that was now broken and you know, not, not a functional community anymore. I think one aspect of uh, the difficulty of moving people from one system to another is it, it's something that I think that's being somewhat addressed by the whole community, which is agent centricity. So you, usually the group belongs to the server, right? So that belongs to LinkedIn. And it's identified that way. And, but there's a kind of Copernican revolution that's possible around that to make both the individual in terms of self-sovereignty and the community uh, in terms of agent centricity uh, kind of independent of whatever server they're happening to use. So that's, so, that's a future direction, but I, I do see Holo as one. Uh, so is, isn't it possible for any person who's participating in the discussion to, to create their own summary? Right. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, because people have different perspectives that they bring to the discussion and, and the things that I think are really insightful, Jerry might not, Jerry might say, well, that I knew that 10 years ago. I mean, that's old news. All right. Mm -hmm. So different individuals as they go through it can in fact make notes on different posts that they think are important to remember and they have their own summary of the discussion thread. Yeah, I mean, it's in a collaborative context in that everyone can see each other's work. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I think the, the, the participation percentages on that kind of work are generally very low. So you might have, you know, uh, you have the discussion and, and so you'll have obviously 100% observing it. Uh, but maybe 10 or 20% participating and then one or 2% who are actually doing something like that. So I think the potential for conflict is, uh, is, is low on, on, on that side, but, uh, but, but they, yeah, it's yeah. We always used to say it was 99 and one, 90% the, the ratios. Yeah. Right. 9% right. active to some extent and 1% were really driving whatever was, was going on in terms of the discussion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but, it, but if only a couple people are curating, that's really still really important work for the whole community. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. Um, I, was, I was just going to uh, look back a little bit because um, uh, Lauren showed me this um, site and in fact, we began a, a, a circle on it a, a couple of weeks ago, which was re pertaining to the project I'm using on Mattermost at the moment, um, which is a brutal beast, you know, Manmost is very um, configurable and deep and rich and dense and it ends up being deep, rich and dense and you can't really find what you want on it. And I'm convening these small groups of six whose task is to just check in once a day, roughly for a few, few minutes. But all of the six are agreeing to check in once a day so that we can jointly find our way around this general area with minimal time commitments, but continuity and crossover. And um, I was asked, and um, I think, was it you, Lawrence, or was it um, um, uh, Tom Atley that asked uh, how Sutra could participate in this? And what I'm seeing from your demonstration today is how instead of having my little sixes all on Mattermost and in their little honeycomb boxes, which has got its value, the whole bloody lot of them could also be on uh, Sutra, which you take some of the nine and 90, as it were, you know, get more of them into a, uh, the opportunity to discuss things, which I want to keep very clear from the opportunity to see things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm very interested in, um, in what I've 
re-seen and see more of today. This is, this is very interesting indeed. I think it's, it's, um, it's got the ambience, it's got the feel, it's got the touch, it's got the facilities. Needs a flickering neon sign in the corner. <laughs> well, you know, what it really needs is a lot of people using it. That's, that's yeah. what you need traffic. And, um, uh, I'd like to have a conversation with you specifically um, about the, what would be involved in, in building some sort of a, a port or a relationship between the Mattermost and this. I was thinking of trying to do a Kumu, but yeah, um, that was a totally different direction for a totally different set of reasons. Um, uh, th there is a lot of interest in federation protocols. Uh, which at least on a technical level would be, uh, so there's a Topic West Foundation and Mark Antoine Perron's Idea Loom who are very much involved with that. And by the way, Idea Loom, which you, you're probably f maybe familiar with, also has uh, a, a sense of this challenge of how you go from flows and how do you harvest those into stocks that make sense, basically. And is that product uh, actively developed? I mean, last I looked at it, it, it looked like it wasn't really being developed. Uh, he's, he's working very hard on it, and he's also working with Jack Park of Topic Quest on Federation. Hmm. And, and actually, there's more players involved with that, uh, Gary Lagos and so on. But, but it, yeah, in terms of Mattermost and uh, Sutra, that, that'd be one, one of the parameters to, to consider is, you know, Federation protocols. But by the way, I guess another general comment I have is that uh, there's really two media where there's words, whether spoken or written, and that's one aspect. And then there's a little bit of visual where like you see photographs of people in these little rows. And uh, that's, so that's, that's what we have. And it's, it's very, it's limited. Uh, but, you know, in terms of various processes, for example, like deep democracy or social presencing theater, there's a lot done with people's physical relationships with each other and what the body says as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so obviously that, that's a challenge in terms of online and I have seen some success with that in terms of virtual communities like Second Life where you do have a body to work with. And that has its own affordances which actually go beyond even the uh, so-called real physical body. But uh, I think that's just kind of a more general comment on some directions where this kind of stuff can be. Can go. Never mind uh, family constellation work, uh -huh. which is even much more subtle. Well, I don't know about much more, but it's 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 a different dim dimension or direction altogether. Uh, but it would be really interesting to find out whether you could do things like this in a non-local way. Yeah, uh, I mean, in in the past, uh, uh, as part of one Alia Institute exercise, uh, we did uh, World Cafe in Second Life, mm -hmm. simultaneously with doing it in so-called real life. And in a way that was kind of easy because you just very literally just redo the whole thing, but there were these extra aspects as well. Things have to be pretty easy. They have to be intuitive, like, like you know, th things have to be very simple beyond the point of the easy thing to design. Like, like simplicity is hard. It, it looks really great when it's done, but having something that manifests in a way that where what you want to do, what you might do is visible, what you want to do is easy to get done, uh, is really, really hard. Any closing thoughts? We're busy pretty much at the end of our, of our time together. Yeah, Lawrence, thank you. This is, this is uh, really, um, it's lovely to go deeper into the tool. Uh, I love the, the collection of humans we have here. Just everybody's got a lot of experience in the topic in a very different way um, with some use cases that matter and all that kind of stuff. So very cool. Thank you guys. I, I appreciate the, uh, the presence and the feedback. Uh, you can feel free to email me, Lorenz at sutra.co. And um, yeah, I, any, any further ideas or, or, or thoughts you might have, I welcome. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Yep. Thanks, Gary, for organizing I'll go, it. I'll mm -hmm. go spend some more time with it. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.